That's the guy I was telling you about, Susie. You sure? Yeah. That's the guy who killed my father. All right, vultures! Rack him up! Let's rip him quick. Listen, Mo. You're making a big mistake. Oh, Ben. You're right. We shouldn't do this quickly. We should draw this out, don't you think, Susie? Hey, I got all night. You heard her, kids. Let's draw this out. Let me go, or else... Or else what? I'll call you names. <laughs> like what? Diaper Dynamo. How... How'd you hear that name? Your father. He told me just before he died. You bludgeoned my father and then talked about old times? I didn't kill him. Rip Burger did. A photographer took pictures, but her camera was stolen by the same thug that came after you. I... I still have that role. Well, develop it, would you? While I still fit in my clothes? Okay, you stay here. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, don't sweat it. I'm gonna get Rip Burger even if I die trying. No, we have to expose Rip Burger at the shareholders' meeting. That way, we take him down, we save my gang, and your father gets his dying wish. You take over Corley Motors. Rip Burger canceled the shareholders' meeting. He made a statement to the press that there'd be no meeting until the murderers were brought to justice. So... No shareholders meeting until we're both dead? Hmm. That could be arranged. Okay, so here we go. Faking Ben and Maureen's death. Act one, scene one. Adrian Ripburger, in a desperate attempt to lure our Maureen out of hiding, has developed the following lame-ass scheme. First prize at tonight's smash-up derby is a vintage hardtail that Mo restored with her dad. Rip hopes Mo will try to nab said bike on account of her sentimental attachment to it. So Ben and Mo play along, put on disguises, and enter the demolition derby, which ends tragically when their cars explode and both are presumed dead. Uh, question. Please save your questions until the end. Now, the explosives in Mo's car can only be triggered by a head-on collision with Ben's car. This ejector seat projects Mo clear of the explosion, and she parachutes to safety. Don't you think someone will notice her rejecting out of her car? No, they'll all be watching you running around on fire. Yeah, that's another question I have. When your car explodes, you climb from it in flames and run around the stadium distracting the audience. In your cute little asbestos suit, of course. <laughs> That's some plan. All right, then. Let's go blow you little darlings up. All right, folks. Hang on to your chili dogs, because it's time to start. The Corley Motors Smashatorium Amateur Driver Ultimate Destruction Maximum Carnage Marathon. Let's meet our crash cage gladiators. That mysterious looking hooded figure wouldn't give us his real name. He prefers to be known as the Unknown Avenger. And that's just fine with us, isn't it, folks? Uh -oh. Now I'm just embarrassed for them. Who do they think they're fooling with those ludicrous disguises? And next to him is another masked newcomer. Please give a big smashatorium salute to the princess of pile-up, Doreen Schmorley! All right, boys. Sick of me. And finally, we have a last-minute addition to the lineup tonight. A deadly-looking team known as the Boom Boom Brothers. Right now, are you ready to see some reckless driving? Are you ready to see some unnecessarily violent destruction? Then let the demolition derby begin! Where are you, Ben? Hang on, Mo. 
Here I come. Wish that firefly while he's hot. <laughs> Look at him run.
Did you get him? We finally got him, Volus. That means Ripburger has to make us vice presidents now, like he promised, and give us 10,000 shares of stock each. Hmm. Funny smell. What's that? The temperature light? Well, on the bright side, I just made 20,000 shares of stock. Time to start the shareholders meeting. Where's the hard tail? All over the floor, Mr. Avenger. What? What happened to your deep sentimental attachment to your father's vintage bike? Ben, it's just a bike. I can put a bet together in about a half an hour. But that's assuming, of course, I can find that key. What key are you talking about? Key to my dad's safe. I remember he hid it somewhere on this bike, but I've looked everywhere and I can't find anything that even looks like a key. What's in the safe that's so important? My dad's will. I'm counting on him to tell the truth about me, finally. Why did he keep you a secret all these years? He didn't want people to find out about my mom. What's so bad about Mrs. Corley? She wasn't my mom. Huh. But how are we going to get in the factory? In the back of the factory, there's a secret entrance that leads straight into Dad's office. He used to sneak me in so I could help him with his bike designs. When he got too old to do all the work himself? Nah, this is back when I was six. Hmm. How do I find the secret passage? Well, it's tricky. You have to wait for all the utility meters to turn black. Then you kick the wall in just the right spot and you're in. How do I find the right spot to kick? Dad just knew exactly where to kick it. But I remember that there was this big crack in the wall, and if I lined up that crack with my eye level and kicked the wall right in front of me, this weird portal would open up. Hmm. How was your flight? Well, there were some explosions during takeoff, and I landed in a minefield. But other than that, it was fine. I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for asking. Mm hmm Great. Now help me find that key. What are we in, anyway? It's a C-330 Big Mouth Industrial Cargo Jumbo Transport we fixed up. We want to get it rolling so we can take it to biker rallies. You're going to try to fly this thing? Rolling, Ben. Rolling. Now, this baby's flying days are over, just like mine. What if I can't find that spot? Just line up your eyes with the crack, wait for the meters to go black, and kick. Remember that time you tried to kill me? Yeah, we really taught you a lesson. <laughs> Get it? That kicking part is pretty vague. Look, I was only six. Give me a break. I'll see what I can do. Right. Hmm. 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 Hmm.
Here, take the photos. I don't want them. Show them to someone important if you get a chance. Very austere, no drawers. No. There's uh, some sort of card. A tape. I sure hope that's Corley's will. Look at that stadium burn. That's gonna take a bite out of the pension fund. That's art. Cool. Looks like the meeting started. Was not only an inspirational leader, but also a great personal friend. His loss affects us all deeply. Malcolm and I spoke often of the future. We talked of a day when Corley Motors would move beyond its humble beginnings into a new vehicular age. And although his tragic death took him from us sooner than anyone expected, Malcolm Corley's dream remains. And I shall carry out that dream in his memory. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present to you the future of Corley Motors. The Corley Minivan. <laughs> Corley was right. I never dreamed it would actually come to minivans, though.
What you see before you right now is my vision for the Oh, perfect. This is a disaster. You're telling me. We're gonna have some major downtime here. Why don't you tell a joke or something? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know any jokes. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of an amusing anecdote. <laughs> About her. Uh, uh, I... Well, I'm out of ideas. No, not really sure of that. Should be something that people would know, but. Well, probably not. No, not really sure of that. Should be something that people would know, but well, there's the problem with the shareholders. The shareholders like something. Now, this next slide shows our new, more aggressive corporate strategy. <laughs> Hello there! If you're hearing this, I must have croaked. Well, people gotta move on, you know, and make room for other people. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I've made room for someone else to take my place at Corley Motors. And it ain't that embezzling crook, Adrian Rickberger! Rip, you don't belong at the head of my company. You belong in jail. I let that man talk me into far too many things. Like keeping my daughter a secret. He was wrong. I was wrong. I should have stood by her. I hope, Maureen, that you forgive me. And that you take over Corley Motors and run it however you see fit. All right, that's enough. How do I turn this damn thing off? I... Uh, I'm sorry you had to hear that, Tate, from... One of Malcolm's psychiatric sessions. And near the end, he, he suffered many paranoid delusions. He was haunted by powerful forces of his own creation. And here's one of them. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maureen Corley, and do I have a heck of a story for you. By the time I'm done, you'll see why this man should be in jail. Hey! Off too. Uh oh. There he goes. And then he sent his goons after me. Run, Rip Burger. When it's time to find you, we'll just follow the shiny trail. Yes, of course, we'll have daycare facilities. Any other questions? Oh, speak of the devil. Come over here, Ben. That is great, Ben. You're finding where we were meant to be all along. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never showed up to help us. And then you go business suit shopping. Don't remind me. Don't complain. You're going to be rich. At this point, I'd settle for just a little peace and quiet.
try that again. So, after we pick up your bike, we'll go get my gang out of jail. And then find out why my gang never so- Don't complain. for the gorge! Ripperger, you're going to kill all of us. Shh, Ben. Don't ruin the ending. How do you stop this thing? From the cockpit! those. I can see him. He's out cold. Climb back here quick. I think you just killed a seagull! Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane! 
Well, the answer's that. Wait, come back! We need your weight in the plane! Life was a game to him, and he played it by his own rules. He was a mystery to most of us, and yet an inspiration to us all. He gave us freedom. He gave us power. He gave us wings. He gave us wheels. Thank you, Malcolm Corley, for giving us a dream that will never die. So. So. Uh, maybe we could do lunch sometime next week. Yeah, sure. Lunch sounds great. Things aren't gonna change, are they, Ben? I mean, just because I'm in charge of the company now, and living in a mansion, and riding around in limos, that doesn't mean we won't spend a lot of time together, does it? Look, Mo, you're in a different league now. You shouldn't be hanging out with the likes of me anymore. But Ben... Oh, just a second. Hello? What? No, 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 that's crazy. Is he nuts? Look, move the meeting up to five and tell the plant foreman that I'm coming over personally to inspect those parts. I know, I know, that's what I told him. <sighs> Excuse me, what was that last part? No, 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 that alloy was flawed to begin with. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 good, great.
Scarecrow free the mistake in the ground. So long, roll on. The plow is greased and it's ready to crease. Did it get out of town? is greatly decreased and now the odds are greatly increased that I may someday get a chance to kiss your lips I thank the Lord each day for the apocalypse Thank <laughs> you. 